in item 3, we're asked to find the forces in three different members of the truss, BC, CG, and GH, as marked here. And remember, the first thing I like to always do is find zero members in the truss, if any uh, should exist. It certainly makes life oftentimes much easier. And I notice right away that at joint H, I get that slanted T joint. Right? And so if I were to pull it out, then I'd see something that looks like this. I'm going to guess in this case that the bottom cord is in compression. It's not a part of what I'm going to be after here in joint H, but notice that in that particular case that CH here has to be zero because if I sum forces in a Y prime direction, then all I'm going to get is the Y prime component of CH and so that Y prime component has to be zero and the whole thing has to be zero and that's going to mean that when I go look at joint C, I would ha end up with the exact same situation that I have a slanted T joint, the member of interest being CG is going to also in effect because CH was zero then so does CG and this time by sum of forces in the Y direction. And so I have one of them and that's actually going to make everything else quite almost even trivial um, because now when I go and I do the method of sections cutting through the other two, um, well really I could have just gone right to this method of joints, right? Because note if I'm getting rid of the, the web members here, all I'm left with are these two top cords. And so anyway you really want to look at it, it's going to amount to the same thing. We're going to get a concurrent force system here at play when we do the method of sections. We've got the applied load of 15. We've got then our member force BC and our member force G. H, right, and we already know that CG is zero. So, you know, we could do this in a lot of different ways. I don't really want to work through these angles, so I'm going to be cl very clever here, and I'm actually going to take and, ex and expand, extend the lines of actions, go all the way to point F. And if I sum moments about point F and go in a counterclockwise fashion for positive, note that BC will have a moment arm of 15 feet and then the moment arm for the 15 kip load is 12 plus 12 plus 12 or 36 feet and so we get 15 times BC minus 36 times 15 is equal to zero and therefore BC must be equal to 36. Notice the units on the numbers kind of flip-flop here and BC is 36 kips and that is positive as shown and as shown that would be tension. So that was number uh, number two and then number three GH. Well let's see if we can't be also similarly clever about this and I think that there's no easy spot that I see right off the bat so instead what I'm going to do is just some forces in the Y to get this. I'll have minus 15 plus the Y component of GH. Right? And let's see, GH is at that 36 to 15 kind of ratio uh, from vertical to horizontal. Um, I don't see, let's see, what would that be? 36 to 15 and that's what? Uh, 30, <laughs> 12 to 12 to 5. Oh, that is that's nice, right? 5, 12, 13 triangle, if I'm not mistaken. 25 plus 144. Take the square. Yeah, that turned out to be one of those nice, clever uh, triangles here. So that's actually 12, 5, 13. And so the Y component here is going to be 5 thirteenths of gh it has to be equal to zero so therefore gh is going to be equal to 13 over 5 times 15 and 
when you know that's a nice pretty little number and that's 39 kips and that's in compression as shown and the plus sign just verifies that so our final answers here then are that BC is 36 kips tension CG is 0 and GH is 39 kips compression and yes it absolutely matters whether you get that right tension or compression